How's it going guys? My name's Honcho and welcome to another squad video. 2022, on the most part, has been a very successful year for Squad and OWI, albeit after a bit of a shaky start. We've seen three new major factions added, a few existing ones updated, and a bunch of new maps, features, and bugs as well. In fact, so much has been released this year alone that if you were to look at the existing roadmap, you would see that it's pretty much completed. There's only a handful of things on here that has either been dropped, delayed, or just gone under the radar. So with 2023 just around the corner, it kind of leaves us all wondering, what's next for Squad? Well, I'll start off with a handful of bits that remain before moving on to things of the future. I'd arguably say that the most anticipated feature from the current roadmap that hasn't made it into Squad yet is fast roping. On the list for 2021, a few screenshots did emerge of working progress, but nothing's been confirmed ever since on the whereabouts of fast roping. Back in 2020, I remember a video went up on YouTube showing the basic functionality of fast roping by Jet and it looked really, really good. But yeah, unfortunately, the trail went cold on this one. A few other things that went cold as well included the pedestrian and occupant damage on vehicle impact and some form of vehicle damage when you crashed into a hard object. Now, as much as I'd love to see running folk over Grand Theft Auto style to take out infantry as it should, the vehicle damage and onboard personnel damage would have been interesting to see how it panned out due to the fact that a simple picket fence can stop a six ton truck dead in its tracks or a small sapling tree that brings a tracked APC to a complete halt. They also mentioned that they wanted to give an overhaul to the insurgency game mode and territory control, but again, so far nothing has came of this and I can't find any information on it. Oh, let's also not forget about that accidental attack helicopter leak a few updates ago. Other than what I've just gone over though, that's the road match pretty much completed. There's many speculative reasons as to why these haven't been released or dropped. Development time could have been too great or it could have had a huge negative impact on in-game performance. So with these things aside, realistically, what's next? Now a quick disclaimer here, everything I'm going to be mentioning from here on in is either hypothetical or speculation, with a, a small smidgen of desire. And naturally, the easiest place to start with right now would be new factions. Currently, Squad has 10 factions in game, 5 blue 4, 2 red, 1 independent or green, and 2 irregular. So whilst adding France, Germany or Italy into Squad would be a very popular and seem a logical approach, it's not what we need right now. Realistically, we need a faction that can go up against everyone. Now, for an independent based faction, like how Middle Eastern Alliance is, there's a few nations that really stand out that will be amazing additions to Squad. For example, Israel, India and Turkey would make great additions. They all have their own unique equipment and vehicles. Yes, they do have a lot of shared arms with nations already in game, but variety is the spice of life. The IDF have some fantastic weapon options, but for a simple example, they have the Tavor TAR-21 bullpup as their main infantry weapon, and it does come in various forms to fill in the multitude of roles within squad. Armor-wise, they have the Mercurva main battle tank would fit into squad absolutely beautifully, no matter which version they went for, and other vehicles from APCs to Jeeps are all incredibly unique. And the same story goes for India and Turkey, as they all have their own unique weapon systems and vehicles. Hell, they can even modernise the insurgent faction to reflect all of the equipment that was left behind that the Taliban have now picked up and started using. There's plenty of other options too. Venezuela, North Korea, South Africa. Hell, if they wanted to have a bit of a laugh, they could give us a Mexican cartel. I suppose it all comes down to licensing and how bothered they are about geopolitics. After all, the game needs to be saleable to a wider audience. Now I put up a community post on YouTube asking what you would all like to see in Squad and I've seen plenty of comments from people wanting Ukraine implemented. Now I'm going to be honest, I can't see that happening in a hurry unless they mask it as something else. An easy way in would be just to simply reskin militia and rename them Eastern European Coalition or something like that. Give them some more Western based weapons to replace some of the AKs, but honestly, until that conflict is over, I just can't see it happening. After factions, the next natural addition would be new maps, and there's a few types of map environments I'd really like to see in the future. Something jungle based would really lend itself to a unique experience in squad, and now that we have amphibious capabilities and boats within squad, something island based would present a new challenge to the players. But personally, I'd love to see a true modern urban city. 
Something like London or Los Angeles, for example, would bring a really unique feel with it, especially as we currently don't have any maps based within US or Britain. And it would make for a fantastic hypothetical theatre to stem off an enemy invasion on home soil. Add in a few key landmarks to really add to the immersion and even have an underground system. It would be a truly unique experience. The world is our playground effectively, and not every map needs to have historical or political reference. And that leads me on to the next topic, and that's the game modes. Don't get me wrong, random advance and secure and invasion are brilliant to play, and they do make up for 95% of the general gaming experience with the odd game of destruction and territory control thrown in. But it's led me on to try and think of what else we could do. I wouldn't be against something frontline based like what Hell Let Loose has, or even have a map with one huge cap point that's then percentage based. So rather than seeing the chevrons on the flag to indicate the cap status, you would see both teams on there, and then the flag would move left to right depending on who has the most control of that point. It may be a dumpster fire, but it may also be extremely immersive. We won't know until we try stuff like this. But what would really freshen up maps and layers right now would be the ability to completely custom build map layers. So server owners could choose points of interest, how many of them there are, and what equipment each team starts with. This would be great for two strong reasons. Firstly, it would give servers their own unique individual experience. And secondly, it would render squad lanes pretty much useless. The maps we have in squad right now are absolutely fantastic but there are so many locations on them that a lot of the map just simply isn't used or visited. So allowing custom layering gives the player base a huge creative spark. Another big talking point is night ops and thermal imaging. I'd be totally down with having full blown nighttime maps if both factions get the appropriate equipment. Doing night runs with nods on Tarkov is some of the greatest games I've ever had and having that kind of gameplay within squad would bring the game up to a whole other level. Now I've heard some talk from the past about adding thermal imagery into squad, but again, nothing's really came of that and I'll be honest, I'm kind of glad. Most games that I have played that have thermals, it's kind of ruined the in-game experience for a lot of people, especially if, as rumours had it, only vehicles such as tanks and the likes were going to get it. This basically mean that you would have an MBT hiding somewhere within loads of vegetation some a thousand metres away. Now for our American friends, who will measure in anything but metric. That's approximately 11,200 cheeseburgers, being your average patty is around three and a half inches. Look, this is a hot take, but thermals basically takes the skill out of spotting, and it would make armor a lot stronger and harder to counter as it already is. By all means, maybe just give it to the commander's turret, but personally in squad, I feel the only real viable for thermals would be on the commander's drone. That way, it can only be used for around five minutes every 15 to 20 minutes. It can be shot down, and it's only really useful for marking and calling things out. Now, a small feature I'd absolutely love to see within Squad would be giving each faction one thing that makes them truly unique. Something like the BM-21 Grad, the Mark 19 Grenade Launcher Emplacement, or the M109 Howitzer. And again, those attack helicopters. Just one piece of equipment or a vehicle that no one else gets. Naturally, for the sake of gameplay, there would be some balancing needed, but for example, the M109 Howitzer would be a very easy vehicle to implement. The Insurgent Hell Cannon already uses the damage model that the Commander Artillery uses, so that could be then transferred into the M109, but over a greater range. It'll just help give each nation that unique strength or feature and help give more immersive gameplay to the players. Another option now that hardware for both PCs and servers are becoming more and more powerful would be stepping up from 100 player servers to 120 players. You know, it wasn't that long ago we went from 80 player servers and people thought going to 100 was impossible. All in all, the options Odoo will I can take are plentiful. Hell, they may already have a roadmap lined up for us to show us within the new year when they get back from their Christmas break. Who knows what they have in store? You never know. They may even come back with a massive shock and announce Squad 2 on Unreal 5. Anyway, what would you guys like to see Squad do in the future? Don't forget, Click that subscribe button for more squad based guides, gameplay and updates. Have a happy new year everyone, take care and I'll catch you in the next video.